continue. Further proof of the hostile relationship between the two nations is recorded in recorded in um, the Encyclopedia of Judaic, Judaic Volume 6, 1971, page 378. Hostile relations between the Edomites and the Jews persisted throughout the Hellen, Hellenistic period. Ben Sira enumerates the Edomites among the nations whom his so abhorred. 50, 25, 26. The same enmity is reflected in the quotation from the Greek writer Manessis given by Josephus. Describing how Zabadias of Dori fooled the people of Jerusalem during the Hesomanian Wars, the Edomites assisted the Seleucid. I can never pronounce that name, but that's one of Alexander the Great's um, generals. You had um, the Ptolemy, and then you had Seleucids, 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 Seleucids. I, I think Seleucids, but I know. Seleuc I know Herod the Great was of the Seleucids against the Jews. Judah Maccabee, he said, see, they say Judah, but it's Judas. Judas Maccabee fought the Edomites and was particularly active against Hebron. A decisive change in the relationship, Salaki, relations between the two nations took place in the days of John Hercanus. Her 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 took place in the days of John Hyrcanus, at the end of the 2nd century BCE. Hyrcanus conquered the whole of Salaki. Hyrcanus conquered the whole of Edom and undertook the forced conversion of its inhabitants to Judaism. And that's in the book of Josephus, Antiquities. Thenceforth, the Edomites became a section of the Jewish people, Edom becoming one of the ordinary administrative districts of the Hasmonean state. It appears that the Hasmonean dynasty used some of the respective families of Edom to establish its dominion in that country. During the reign of Alexander Yanni and his wife Alexandra Salom, Antipius, which is, um, I think, a Herod, who was an Edomite, served as ruler of the Edom on behalf of the Hasmoneans. Herod, appointed king of Judea by the Romans in 40 BCE, was his grandson. Right. I was right. During the reign of Herod, Edom served in general as the firm basis of his authority. He considered the Edomites to be the most selected, to be much more loyal to him than the Jews, and also depended upon them for the military settlement in Transjordan. 3,000 Edomites being settled in Turekin. Despite this, even during his reign, an attempt was made to sever the link between Edom and Judea. The king's brother-in-law, Custobar entered into a conspiracy with Cleopatra, queen of in Egypt. Wow, that's deep. I got to check into this history. It say like the king's brother-in-law, Custobar, entered into a conspiracy with Cleopatra, queen of Egypt, for the purpose of annexing Edom directly to Egypt. But the plot was foiled by Herod. After the death of Herod in 4 BCE, Edom was concluded with Judea and Samaria and the in threat narchy of Archelaus. When the later was disposed in 6 BCE, Edom became part of the Roman province of Judea. Furthermore, Gaza was served, severed from any administrative connection with Edom and added to the province of Syria. Consequently, the size of Edom was reduced in view of the fact that by degrees, the differences between the Edomites and their Salakia and their northern neighbors became blurred. The Roman government decided to abolish the separate status of Edom as an administrative district equal in status to Judea or Samaria. Towards the end of the Second Temple era, Edom appears as one of the 11 ordinary top archies, top parkeries of Judea. That's Josephus, the um, Jewish wars. The Edomites participated in the Roman War of 66, through 70 AD, they were organized in their own detachments, and at the time of the fratricidal war in Jerusalem between the Zealots and their opponents under the leadership of Anan B. Anan, hastened to the help of the Zealots on the assumption that Anan and his associates intended to deliver the city into the hands of the Romans. The Edomites were led by four commanders. They, they 
penetrated into Jerusalem on, on a rainy night and freed the zealots who were besieging the temple, thus triumphing over their enemies. During the siege of Jerusalem by Titus, they consisted Salakia. They cons during the siege of Jerusalem by Titus, they constituted a special division, numbering 5,000 men. They were led by 10 officers, the most prominent among them being Jacob B. Sosasis and Simeon B. Catala. They acted under the high command of Simeon B. Giora. Joe Hananan, brother of Jacob, was killed during the siege, and the Edomites were prominent in the defense of Jerusalem. Titus II regarded them as an important element of the Judean military force. It is not known which were the most important Edomite centers of settlement at the end of the days of the Second Temple. That's deep. I never knew this. I'm going to try and get this book. Because it give you a, uh, not to digress, but it give you like a, a bibliography in the back about different books that they helped to read and, you know, in our arsenal. Because, um, you know, knowledge is power in this thing of ours. Um, I'm going to check into some of these books. But it wouldn't be a bad book to ha have, you know what I mean? Like this is a library copy of, like I said, um, usually anything um, within like, say, say like it's 2018 now. So they'll have books going all the way back to maybe like 2010 on the shelves. Anything past that date will be in the stacks. So you'll have to call and have a librarian go get it. So this book was just sitting on the shelf. And, you know, I was going to, into the library to actually find a book to do a video on. And then I came across this or just through the spirit, I felt maybe I should read out of it. And a lot of what is written you know, actually is on point with what the elders actually bring out, you know, I mean, some things go off, you know, and I do want to find out about that particular person that was mentioned, you know, because they, she didn't speak on Elder um, Abba Bivens, she went into some other person, but they, that was in another state as well, too, so, you know, I could, I could see the most high opening up other people's minds, you know, and, you know, awakening in the spirit. I'm continuing. We can rarely see how Esau, the Edomites, is fighting to survive to break his Jacob's yoke from off his neck. Their participation in the Roman Jewish War of 6670 gives evidence of this unending hostility between the two nations. This was another opportunity for them to triumph over their enemies, the Israelites. The Idumean rulers were then in power, and this was an opportunity for the Edomites, who had already converted to Judaism, to become more widely known as the world power religiously, politically, and economically. Conclusion. The white European Jews consist of people from different ethnic backgrounds who converted to the way of life known as Judaism. But like I said, when you go into Judaism, like like I say, like that is some shit that the Khazars actually practice. When you go into the Kabbalah and all that, you know, that's not what this thing of ours is about. Uh, the Edomites are referred to in the Bible as the rich Jews. Six, Revelation two and nine. I told you that's like I said two two foes. Scripture, you know, like how Matthew's 24 is. Matthew's 24 goes into the end of days like we're seeing today, but it also was talking about the end of days, the time of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. So sometimes, you know, any like I said, brothers that's in the faith and been in the faith that understand sometimes scriptures have, you know, or two and threefold, you know, revelations, you know what I mean? Uh, continuing. These are the offspring of Esau who converted to Judaism at the end of the second century. Other so-called white groups, such as the Khazars, who converted to Judaism in 740 A.D., and the other pro salites make up modern-day Jewry as it is known today. They are not on, now in possession of Palestine. However, they also live in other parts of the world. When... The Israelites were scattered in 70 A.D. and were enslaved. The white European Jews preserved the way of, of life known today as Judaism. They became known as the true biblical tribe over the centuries, mainly because the true so-called black Hebrew Israelites became absorbed into other religions, such as Christianity, Islam. And I agree with that. You know what I mean? Because you got a majority of, like I say, Israelites that don't even realize they're Israelites. They're scattered. And that's how you can actually understand who the real Israelites are, who the real Jews are, because like I said, that was one of the curses. You know, they were going to be scattered abroad and would not know who they were. Matter of fact, let me get that. Bear with me for a second.
Let me try. Um. You got multiple scriptures here, I mean. You know, you can just read Zechariah. I'm just get this one. Zechariah 7 and 14. Say, but I scattered them with the whirlwind among all the nations whom they knew not. Thus the land was desolate after them that no man passed through nor returned, for they laid the pleasant land desolate. And, you know, I'm sure it's, you know, because the real Israelites are everywhere, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, the majority of those Khazars are over in that land. And like I said, it's multiple more, I mean, multiple scriptures that go into that they were scattered, you know, taken out of the land. So that was one of the signs of who the real Jews were. I mean, like, it also says that, um, you know, we weren't going to get back there on our own or man wasn't going to make a council and let us go back over there. It says in scripture that, you know, the Most High was going to bring us back into the land. And I believe that's actually... Um, That's in Isaiah, I believe. Um, Isaiah. Uh, let me catch that real quick. Then I'm going to continue. Isaiah, I think, 10. Uh, 10, verse maybe, what, 19. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such are Salaki and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again Stay upon him that smite them, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One. Verse 21, that's the point. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty power. Well, that's meaning they're going to return to the land. I mean, they're going to return back to the Most High. Let me see if I can find it real quick, just for edification's sake. Isaiah 10 and 20. I 
one. Say Isaiah 10, 20, 21. Um, say that they return upon him. Return upon him that smart them, but shall stay upon the Lord thy power, the Holy One of Israel and truth. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty Yahweh. Verse 22, for thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decrees shall overflow with righteousness. So, oh, back to this, the white Edomite Jews, uh, I read all that. So it says, um, conversion. In the course of my researches, the evidence indicates that the so-called European Jews converted to Judaism. They are not from the original tribes of Israel, to which the Bible refers. The original biblical tribes were descended from Jacob, and they were called Hebrews or Israelites, children of Israel. The Edomites, so-called white European Jews descended from Esau, converted to Judaism at different periods in history, as early as the count of the in the book of Esther, we read the king, uh, Sirius, which is um, King Xerxes, who ranked King Xerxes from the um, movie 300. Uh, a Xerxes who ran from India to Ethiopia, <coughs> Salakia, who ran from India to Ethiopia, sent out a decree to protect the Jews or Israelites who were under Persian rule. Um, many of the people of the land became Jews. Esther's 8 and 17. It is possible that many of the people collectively known as Edom, descended from Esau, professed in or converted to Judaism to escape the king's wrath. This territory from India to Ethiopia was comp comprised of so-called black people such as the Hittites, Hevites, Jebusites, and Canaanites. Esau's descendants were Ishmaelites, Canaanites, Hittites, and Hivites. These people, the so-called black races, intermarried with Esau of the white race, as indicated previously. As a later period in history, a noted historian, Flavius Josephus, stated that the Idumeans became part of Jewry. Idumeans or slash Edomites. Idumeans was just a Greek way of saying Edomites. They were conquered and were forcibly made Jews. After the final destruction of the temple at Jerusalem in 70 AD, the Edomites were traditionally enemies of the Israelites. They fought Saul and were defeated by David, who partly annexed their land. Right, because David made garrisons in their land, so they had outposts in their land. Um, the Edomites were traditionally... Uh, uh, I read that part. The Edomites regained their independence during the reign of Jehoram, but wars between the states were frequent. And Jehoram um, was when um, they, you know, the, you had the tribe split when you had the... Um, Rehoboam and Jeroboam, no, uh, Salaki, that's my fault. I got to go into this because Jeroboam was the one king when it, when you had the split. And uh, Rehoboam was Solomon's son. So I forgot who Jeroboam was. I'm going to have to go into that. But wars between the states were frequent. In the 8th century BCE, the Edomites became vessels, vassals of Assyria. At the destruction of the first temple, they plundered and looted in association with the Babylonians and being driven out from Seir by the Nebuchadnezzar occupied southern Judah during or after the period of exile. I will stop there.